Hello, today we look at this question on curve sketching. The question says, given that the function f where f of x equals ln of x plus 1 all over x minus 2, find the domain of definition of f, find the limits of f at the boundaries of its domain and hence state the equations of asymptotes to the curve y equals f of x. Investigate the variation of f and draw its variation table. Sketch the curve y equals f of x. Find the center of symmetry of the curve y equals f of x. To begin solving, there is a simple table that I've presented here and it would help us to study the behavior of the curve in the neighborhood of one of its boundaries. We note that as we can see from the table, values of x have a certain characteristic in that they are gradually approaching negative 1 and they are doing so from the left. We can notice that as those values are approaching negative 1 from the left, those of this rational function which happens to be the uh, argument of the log function that we are seeking to sketch are decreasing you can see that they are decreasing towards zero and since they are all positive we can conclude that they are decreasing or they are tending to zero from above while that of the log function itself is decreasing towards negative infinity you can see they are gradually decreasing and they can only do so towards negative infinity as we are getting closer and closer to negative one from the left further we can understand what is happening by looking generally at the graph of ln of x and as we can notice from the graph as x values are approaching zero from above the graph of ln of x is tending to negative infinity and as x values are approaching positive infinity the graph of ln of x is approaching positive infinity as well so the conclusions we can have from the table and from the graph is that as x tends to negative 1 from below x plus 1 all over x minus 2 tends to 0 from above and then ln of x plus 1 all over x minus 2 tends to negative infinity we can do the same study this time at the neighborhood of 2 from above and we'll discover that as x values are approaching 2 from above those of x plus 1 all over x minus 2 would be approaching positive infinity while those of ln of x plus 1 all over x minus 2 would be approaching positive infinity as well as we have already seen from the graph these studies are important for us as we are going to be taking limits at the boundaries of the domain of the function we are seeking to sketch now we go to the sketch proper the first part was asking us to find the domain of definition of f of x and we should note then that for a log function to be defined the argument of that log function needs to be strictly positive and so we can write that x plus 1 all over x minus 2 would be strictly positive that means greater than 0 for that function to be defined and with this we see that the set of values that will satisfy that condition would be x less than negative 1 or x greater than 2 a graph is needed for us to understand better how those intervals come about. The critical values are negative 1 and 2. We can notice that those critical values divide the real number line into three regions. The region between negative 1 and 2, the region beyond 2 to the right, and the region beyond negative 1 to the left. 
we can notice that between negative 1 and 2 if you take a value of x in that region and substitute in this function we would always have a negative value so in this region this function is always negative while beyond 2 to the right you take any value of x in that region and you substitute in this function it will always give you a positive value same for the region beyond negative 1 to the left you take any value of x in that region and substitute in this function it will give you a positive value so it means this function is always positive in the region beyond negative 1 to the left and in the region beyond 2 to the right so we can then conclude that for the log function to be defined it has to take only x values less than negative 1 or x values greater than 2 we can then write the domain of definition of the function in bracket notation which specifies that x values would lie between negative infinity and negative 1 negative 1 not included or they would lie between 2 and positive infinity with 2 not included in the second part of the question we are asked to find the limits of the function at the boundaries of its domain and it should be noted that the boundaries of the domain as already indicated are negative infinity negative one two and positive infinity if we start with the limit in the neighborhood of negative infinity we would have that that limit of the function is the same as ln of the limit of the argument writing the argument in the form in which we can easily study the behavior of the function in the neighborhood of negative infinity we can put it in this form which is simply obtained by dividing every term in the function both at the numerator and at the denominator by x which is the highest degree of x in that function once it is in this form we can clearly see that as x tends to negative infinity 1 over x and 2 over x both tend to 0 so the value of that limit would simply be ln of 1 which gives 0 we take the other limit as x tends to positive infinity we can see again that the limit of that function is the same as ln of the limit of the argument which is put again in the form that we can easily study and as already seen above as x tends to positive infinity 1 over x and 2 over x both tend to 0 and so the value of that limit again is ln of 1 which is 0 from these two limits we can conclude then that the line y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote because generally as values of x tend to either negative infinity or to positive infinity if a function tends to a finite value then that finite value becomes a horizontal asymptote to the function the two limits happen to be the same value and so there is only one horizontal asymptote which is y equals zero we note that the other boundary of the domain was negative one as our investigation showed we can only study the behavior of the function to the left of negative one since to the right the function doesn't exist as we already studied at the beginning of the video as x values tend to negative 1 from below the argument of the function x plus 1 all over x minus 2 were tending to 0 from above and so this left limit would just be negative infinity now the other boundary of the domain was 2 and again since the function doesn't exist to the left of 2 we just have a one-sided limit the limit as x tends to 2 from above we saw again at the introductory part of the video that as x values tend to 2 from above x plus 1 all over x minus 2 tends to positive infinity and so the value of this limit is positive infinity as the graph indicated earlier Again here, since these limits to the left of negative 1 and to the right of 2 all have some infinity, we can conclude that the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 
a vertical asymptote to the graph of y equals f of x. In the third part of the question, we were asked to study the variation of f of x. And it is important to note that to study the variation of f of x, what is also called the sense of variation, it is about looking whether the function is increasing in what region of the domain and decreasing in what region of the domain. So we will start by finding the derivative of the function which is given as f of x equals ln of x plus 1 all over x minus 2 and we can further simplify using laws of logarithm to have it in the form that we can easily differentiate. And so f prime of x will be equal to 1 all over x plus 1 minus 1 all over x minus 2 which upon finding the LCM and simplifying gives negative 3 all over x plus 1 all over x minus 2. Further, we need to find out if there are turning points on the curve because they are also important in determining the sense of variation of the function. At the turning point, f prime of x is supposed to be zero. When we equate f prime of x to zero, we discover that there are no real values of x for which that for, for which f prime of x would actually be zero. And so we can conclude that f of x has no turning points. Further, we also need to look at the various regions of the domain of the function and see whether f prime of x would be less than zero or greater than zero in those regions. We have the region between negative infinity and negative one. If you take any value in that region and substitute in f prime of x, you will discover that it will always be negative. And so we can conclude that in the region between negative infinity and negative 1, f prime of x is strictly less than 0. Just like in the region between 2 and positive infinity, any value of x in that region substituted in f prime of x, it will always be negative. And so we also conclude that in that region, f prime of x is strictly less than 0. Since f prime of x is strictly less than zero in the two regions that make its domain, we can make a conclusion that f of x is always decreasing on its domain. The next part now we have to look at the table of variation of f of x which is also very crucial in the tracing of the curve. The table is presented here and the characteristics of the table are that it always has three rows. In the first row, we have values of x at the boundaries of the domain, which range from negative infinity through negative 1, 2, and then to positive infinity. In the second row, we have f prime of x, and we would be interested in the sign that f prime of x takes in those regions. And as already seen above, f prime of x is negative in the region between negative infinity and negative 1 and also negative in the region between 2 and positive infinity. In the last row, we need to now see clearly the monotonicity or the sense of variation of the function as such. It generally has arrows indicating whether the graph or the function will be decreasing from what neighborhood or from what value to what other value or neighborhood or increasing but in this case we had only the case where it is decreasing then we saw from the investigation that as x tends to negative infinity f of x was tending to zero and as x tends to negative one from the left f of x was tending to negative infinity we also saw that as x tends to two from above f of x was tending to positive infinity and as x tends to positive infinity, x was tending to zero. So we can conclude then that in this region between negative infinity and negative one, the function decreases from the neighborhood of zero, which is a horizontal asymptote, to negative infinity to the left of negative one, which is a vertical asymptote while in the region between 2 and positive infinity the function decreases from positive infinity
to the neighborhood of zero which is a horizontal asymptote and so this is the table of variation which as i said is very crucial in the tracing of the curve especially this last row now we move to the sketch of the curve which is presented in the diagram here as we investigated and saw the line y equals zero which is the x-axis was a horizontal asymptote we had a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one and another one at x equals two they are presented here in dotted lines then for the sketch of the curve the table of variation tells us that in the region between negative infinity and negative one the graph decreases from the neighborhood of zero and is moving towards negative infinity to the left of negative one which is a vertical asymptote and then in the region between two and positive infinity the graph decreases from positive infinity to the neighborhood of zero which is a horizontal asymptote so this is the graph in its entirety we move to the last part of the question which is asking for the center of symmetry which is also the point of symmetry on the curve it is actually located at the point of intersection of its asymptotes now there are two vertical asymptotes so the point of symmetry should lie midway between them and should then intersect with the horizontal asymptote which is y equals zero so to get the point of symmetry we have to start by looking at the x coordinate as i already said since there are two vertical asymptotes the point would lie midway between them and intersect with the horizontal asymptote so to get that midpoint of the two values of x at the vertical asymptotes which are negative one and two the mid value would simply be the average of the two values which we add and divide by two it gives half while the y coordinate is simply the horizontal asymptote which occurred at y equals zero and so the point of symmetry on that curve would be half zero thanks for watching and see you in the next video